Hello once again watchers of good anime. My name is Nick Pell and these are my first impressions of the spring 2020 anime season. Now there are about 30 shows that I'm watching this season so I'm going to go through the whole batch of them. Um, give either a long impression or a short impression. It just kind of depends on the show and how much I have to talk about uh, with it. Um, and just kind of go from there. I also put a list of all the shows down in the description as well along with like what streaming platform they're on in case you're curious about any of them and where you can watch them. There is nothing really from High Dive or from Amazon Prime this season that I'm watching. There's, they just don't really have anything. I was going to watch uh, my teen romantic comedy snafu on High Dive. Got delayed, so what do you do? Also, I'm probably going to butcher a lot of anime titles and character names and that stuff because I'm not going to remember everyone's name. So, apologies if that bugs you. So the first show that I'm going to talk about is the only one that is basically an ongoing show, that is Boruto. The show seems to be finally adapting the manga arc, which people are really excited about, which kind of starts to play into that first scene that we saw at the beginning of the show uh, with the destroyed uh, Leaf Village and Boruto being kind of in Shippuden mode, basically. Um, and going up against this mysterious figure. And so I think we get to learn who that mysterious figure is and the organization that he works for. So I know nothing of what to expect, but I'm excited for it. I've enjoyed Burrito for what it was, and so let's see what it does. Shachi Bacho, President, it's time for battle. This is a anime which seems to be based on a mobile game, from what I understand. Um, and it deals with this young man who has a childhood friend who works for this, uh, essentially a guild or like a battle company that go off on quests and get items for people and things of that sort. Um, and he is recruited to be the new president once the old one, I think, mysteriously vanishes or retires or something of that sort. Um, and he has to basically run the company, try to get them money, um, and it seems comedic enough. Uh, it doesn't seem like anything too terribly memorable thus far, but I'm enjoying it. For, uh, for what it is, um, and first couple episodes are fine. Gleipnir. Um, this is a show which I've actually read a little bit of the manga of, um, because I saw it on Lion's Horn and it looked interesting, so I was like, oh, I'll check that out, and I read a little bit of it. So um, I knew a little bit of what to expect from this going into it, um, but it's still a very interesting anime um, from what I've at least read and seen so far, in that it focuses on a young boy who out of nowhere starts to become or starts to be able to become this, uh, basically, a, a furry mascot monster. He will just change into this creature, um, unknowing why that happens. This young girl, who he ends up rescuing, uh, discovers who he is, and they end up having to team up to fight off uh, other monsters who are trying to obtain these mysterious coins. Uh, it becomes kind of a survival, uh, while also being a day in the life type of situation. Uh, so, I like it. I think it looks really cool. It's very violent, <laughs> so keep that in mind. Uh, but I like the dark anime, which have like action beats to them. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of Gletnir. Uh, it looks cool. Suga Suga Mono uh, is the second season of the Suga Mono anime. Um, it focuses on a young man who has teamed up with the spirit of a uh, Obi that his mother has left him after she passed away. Uh, and they have to fight off against other spirits which are trying to cause problems in their city as more and more uh, friendly spirits and human counterparts end up siding with them and fighting with them. Um, it's a fun show, it's an etchy show, it's a comedy, uh, and it's one that I actually watched the whole entirety of the first season of uh, in the last week, uh, and I actually quite enjoyed it um, and found myself getting more into it than I thought I would. Uh, so yeah, um, second season. If you're going to watch it, you're probably already watching it. Uh, but. I'd say check it out. It's funny, and I like it. Woodpecker's Detective Office is a kind of, a, seems to be, at least after the first episode, which debuted yesterday, uh, a standard detective show thus far. Um, I don't know if the main mystery is going to uh, kind of do like an inspector thing, where it kind of lasts for the entirety of the season, or if it'll just be wrapped up in an episode or two. Uh, but it focuses on these two young men who basically start up a detective agency. Shocker. Um, but the twist is that it kind of decides to flash forward to, I think, like 10 years in the, in the future, um, uh, and goes back and forth between that and um, one of the gentlemen who's still alive and around, um, who's kind of reminiscing because his partner has since then passed away. Um, and so uh, I'm curious to see where this goes. It's only one episode in, so I don't really have a lot of uh, stuff to say about it thus far, but it could end up surprising me. Who knows? Shiro Neko Project Zero Chronicle um, is a fantasy anime which focuses on uh, 
basically a heaven and hell scenario where you have the kingdom of light, kingdom of darkness, and you have our two protagonists in those distinct areas who I presume are going to end up uniting as a united force at some point to take down uh, the demon king or the king of darkness or whatever it is. Uh, and so uh, that's at least what the OP seems to be implying and that it's also going to turn into something of a love story as well. Uh, which I'm always down for. I'm down for like the Romeo and Juliet-esque uh, scenario um, for love story, things like that. Uh, and the animation so far looks good. Uh, the action scenes are well done from what I've seen. Uh, and I'm curious to see more about this world um, and see where the story ends up going. Princess Connect Redive is also an anime based on a game of some sort. Uh, and this is one of my favorite shows of the season thus far because it definitely has a Konosuba vibe to it. Um, it is an isekai show where our main protagonist is stuck in this fantasy world. He has this young, cute girl um, who basically has to uh, obey his commands and basically serve as his, his steward or servant or what have you, or helper. Uh, I don't know. Um, and uh, the twist with it is that he's not really like a Kirito type or a Kazuma type or anything like that. Um, he's a silent protagonist for the most part. He seems to have lost a great majority of his memory. Um, and so a lot of the show is focusing on him trying to regain those memories um, and uh, while also being enlisted in various comedic scenarios. It definitely has, like I said, a Konosuba vibe where it has four main leads um, and they're put into funny battle situations. Um, I like it so far. Um, it's very comedic. It's probably had me laughing more than any other show so far this season. Um, and so, yeah. I'd say check it out. I think it's really funny. Um, and if you're a fan of Konosuba, you'll probably enjoy it like I have. Second season of Fruits Basket is also up, um, and uh, two episodes in, it's it's Fruits Basket. It's what I enjoyed about the first season, just continuing on from here. Uh, I know nothing about the original manga text, so I don't know where the story's supposed to go or anything like that. I, I think I've heard that it's now past where the original anime series went, um, or got to, um, and so... Yeah, uh, I think it's supposed to be like three seasons in total, so I'm assuming we're not going to have everything wrapped up by the end of this season, which I'm assuming is a two-core. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for it. I really enjoyed Fruits Basket Season 1. I'm going to still enjoy Fruits Basket Season 2. Diary of Our Days at the Breakwater um, is a fishing show uh, where it's basically cute girls doing cute things. In this case, it's fishing. You have this young girl who ends up moving to this rural town, kind of in a non non uh type of situation. Um, and she ends up being enlisted in this fishing club. She is kind of squeamish around fish and bugs and whatnot. Uh, and yet she ends up uh, going to the first day of it, really starting to enjoy it. And that's what the first episode is pretty much. Um, and so uh, I'm guessing it's gonna be just kind of more of that. Not a lot of drama, just like I said, cute girls doing cute things and I'll watch it for the sake of it. Shadowverse is the latest uh, card game anime uh, that I've never heard of or played, so I'm learning the rules as I watch it. First two episodes are basically a similar setup to how Yu-Gi-Oh! originally set up, where you have this young guy uh, who has to get back a stolen possession uh, from someone that he cares about, or for someone that he cares about, um, and uh, ends up becoming this really good duelist or Shadowverse player, or whatever they designate themselves as. Uh, it's fine so far. Like I said, I'm seeing a lot of similarities to Yu-Gi-Oh! thus far, uh, but I'll still watch it because it's enjoyable enough and it seems well done enough. And it could have a darker story that I'm just not aware of. Uh, or it could just be some little kid anime that I will fall out of eventually. But uh, I like it so far. It's fine. It's not going to be my favorite by any means, but I'll watch it. Hiro no Sora is also continuing this season uh, with a with the first game or two uh, of the inner high uh, basketball tournament. Um, and so that seems to be what the show is going to be. Uh, it's just going to be a long, drawn-out basketball games. And, uh, yeah, I've been watching this show since uh, fall of 2019, um, and it's in its third quarter now, and I still enjoy it, being it's the first sports anime that I'm consistently sticking with for the long duration that it's going to be airing because I think it wraps up in the summer season so it'll have gone to like a whole floor course so uh, yeah I enjoy it I think it's fun if you're watching it you're probably going to keep watching it. Tower of God is probably the most anticipated show on this list for a lot of people just because it's one that I've personally actually heard of uh, before it was actually announced. I had a friend who I work with who was really excited for it and so I 
recognized it once I saw it. Um, it's based on a Korean webtoon that I have not read, so I know nothing going into it. Uh, but the first episodes, I don't really know what the show is going to be. Honestly, it focuses on a young man who is trying to uh, climb this tower called the Tower of God, shockingly, uh, trying to um, catch up and find his lost friend um, and Rachel, who uh, he's kind of devoted his life to, more or less. Um, and uh, it seems to be kind of like a survival game show thus far, based on the first couple episodes. Uh, but I don't know what to really expect from it. Um, I've heard great things from it, um, and so I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm assuming it's supposed to span multiple seasons, but who knows? <laughs> uh, and so I'm excited for it. Um, it looks good so far. The animation is very unique for its own style. The characters are fun to look at and uh, seeing them interact with each other. Um, and so, yeah. It's one that I'm excited for, and uh, probably one of my favorites of the season so far. Tamiyomi is the other uh, sports anime, this time focusing on baseball. It's the second baseball anime that I've actually watched um, since I started watching anime regularly. It focuses on this young girl who ends up uh, going to this high school. She had uh, a bad time in middle school being a pitcher because she has this really uh, cool curveball that nobody is actually able to catch, so none of her catchers um, wanted to have her throw it. Um, and so, uh, something that she was working towards and building towards for a long time, many years, uh, she just wasn't able to do, and so she just kind of fell out of love with the sport. Um, one of her childhood friends ends up going to the same uh, high school. She's actually able to catch the pitch, um, and so uh, she becomes more inspired. She ends up joining the baseball team, and uh, other people end up being recruited, um, and I'm presuming they'll eventually play games. That's kind of how these go. Um, so it's fine. I like what it is so far. I don't think it'll get any deeper than it is, but I enjoy it. It's fine. Plunder is also continuing in its second core this season, um, uh, dealing with a time travel arc so far, but the OP seems to focus on a lot of the more present day stuff, um, so I'm assuming this time travel-esque part will only last a few more episodes, maybe. Um, but who knows? Uh, I enjoy Plunder. It was probably one of my favorite shows of the last season, um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I like it. Uh, I'm curious where it goes. I enjoy the show. So, if you're watching it, kind of like the others, you're probably going to keep watching it. The Ace Son, Are You Kidding Me? This is another isekai show focusing on a young man who is uh, put into the body of this young boy um, who is, as you would guess, the Ace Son of this noble family who is actually a poor noble family, so it's interesting. Um, he ends up being gifted with magic, um, and so the first couple episodes focus on him trying to learn the basics of that magic um, and eventually set off to be an adventurer on his own once he's of age to do so. I don't really know where the show is going to go. It's an isekai, so I'm assuming there's going to be some big evil force that he ends up being the only one who can uh, deal with it. Uh, but this kind of is also in the same situation as um, Sense of a Bookworm, in that you have uh, like in a person um, put into the body of this young boy who, unlike Bookworm, uh, we don't, we can't really assume that they ha ha would have died already. If the original person would have died, and this person is just kind of taking their spot. Um, and so it's kind of interesting, or kind of, it's always weird for me with isekai that do that. It's not just like you're actually brought back as a new person in this fantasy world. Uh, you're actually just taking the place of somebody who has already existed. Um, and so I don't think they're going to address it like Bookworm has, uh, but. Uh, I am curious to see uh, where the show ends up going because um, I don't really know because it's basically been a lot of prologue setup stuff for the first episode so who knows where it'll end up going but I enjoy what I've seen so far. Millionaire Detective is another detective show um, for the season uh, which deals with, based on the first episode, a uh, standard detective person um, who ends up having a partner with this very rich person who ends up having this seemingly unlimited amount of money <laughs> that he can just spend to solve all his problems. I don't know. Um, first episode was fine. It's basically, like I said, a setup episode. So I don't really know where the show is supposed to go or what it's going to dive into or anything of that real nature, but I'm intrigued enough to keep watching. Kakushi Goto is another comedy of the season which focuses on this manga artist who is known for drawing kind of etchy or funny or more mature content, um, and it's what he does as a living, and yet he is very desperate to make sure that his young daughter does not figure out what he does for a living, um, and so a lot of the show is focused on him trying to hide that scenario, while also jumping to her being 18 
and me not knowing if he's supposed to have died after this point or not. Um, but uh, it focuses on her slowly kind of unraveling um, what he has done once she is of age. Um, and I'm assuming eventually seeing her reaction to that. Um, and so yeah, it's, it seems like it might be deeper than I expected it to be. Um, but it's also got a lot of good comedy to it as well. Um, and her character, uh, the daughter's character, is very cool as a young kid. Uh, just because she's very kind of in the know and I think uh, has a lot more going on in her head um, than the average uh, young child of whatever age she is. Certain Scientific Railgun T. Um, this is another show which is continuing this season as a lot of our, a lot of them are. Um, it's, as you probably know if you're watching it, has suffered a lot of delays due to COVID-19 recently. Um, and so it seems to be on track so far uh, to just continue bustling along. It's starting to get very exciting with its uh, current arc. Um, and it's a series and franchise which I found myself to really enjoy for the most part. So I'm going to keep watching it. You probably are too if you're watching it already. Food Wars The Fifth Plate uh, is the fifth and presumably final season of the Food Wars series. It's in another show which I binged through the entirety of uh, in the last month or so um, to get caught up for this current season. Uh, I enjoyed it for the most part aside from the food orgasms which happen every episode seemingly. Um, <laughs> uh, but this is also the blue arc which from what I've seen online people just absolutely hate because, which I can't really uh, doubt them for because of what the OP seems to imply is going to happen and also the fact that season four basically felt like a series finale and a wrap up and aside from that little tag at the end which set up the next arc it could have easily ended there so I don't really know what's going to happen uh, or if I'll end up just absolutely hating it but who knows I'm excited for it regardless We'll see what happens with it. Far Ramen is a show which takes place in the United States, uh, where I currently reside. Um, and it deals with, I think, like eight, 19th century uh, US, where you have this, um, these two people from Japan who end up uh, making their way to the US and end up in this uh, driving race going from, I think, LA to the East Coast. Um, and uh, one of them is a big, basically a tech or a uh, gadget genius. Um, and the other one is just kind of there along for the ride and they end up uh, recruiting other companions, it would seem, uh, as well. Um, I don't really know what to expect from this show. Uh, it seems like it's got a good amount of comedy, uh, but it's one episode in. I don't really know what to expect from it. So I like what I've seen so far, though. Sakura Wars, the animation, is basically an advertisement for the game that comes out uh, in, like, a a month or so. And from what I've understood from someone who is more familiar with the series, this takes place 14 years after the events of the original show, which I have never seen and know nothing about, um, and deals with a whole new uh, group of girls who are stage performers, but also like the defenders of the world or something of that nature. And also, I guess, takes place after the events of the game that's based on. So that seems spoilery. I guess. It's fine. Uh, it's not going to be my favorite show, but it's an action-y show. The main character seems a little dense <laughs> for my taste, uh, but I'll watch it, I guess. Uh, I don't know. It seems fine. Wave Listen to Me is a show focused on a radio station, which I have not seen anything do so far in anime form, um, where you have this uh, middle-aged um, waitress at a restaurant who ends up one night getting drunk and being recorded by this radio producer, um, basically just ranting about her ex-boyfriend um, and love and things of that nature. Um, it ends up getting played on the radio. She ends up going on the radio um, and doing more of these types of just ad-libbed, uh, one-track mind type of things. Um, and eventually gets recruited as a radio personality, gets her own segment as the first episode seems to foreshadow, um, and it kind of goes from there. Um, and so I've liked this show so far. It's two episodes deep, and I I think it's interesting enough, and I don't really know where it's going to end up going, but I like the main character. She seems interesting, um, and uh, the whole concept is very unique from what I've seen of anime personally. Listeners is kind of a sci-fi show, which I think is kind of post-apocalyptic of sorts, um, where you have these earless creatures who are going to try to take down these 
uh, these, set, these human settlements uh, while being defended by these players who, I don't know if they're human or not, honestly. They have like a um, headphone jack in, the, in their back which connects to these devices which are able to transform into these giant robot creatures that they are then able to control along with, alongside somebody else who's kind of manually operating it or something. Uh, it's kind of a weird show and I don't really know what my whole thoughts are on it so far. Um, it seems like it might go into something a little bit deeper or um, get more exciting as it eventually rolls out um, more of its characters and its plot, uh, as <laughs> most shows do. Uh, but the first few episodes had me intrigued. I don't really know what to expect from it. I don't know if I'll end up liking the finished project once it's done. Boom Go to Alchemist, Gears of Judgment. Uh, this is another kind of weird show um, in that it takes famous, I think, Japanese authors um, and reincarnates their souls into this area where they have to go into various books which are being um, tampered with and stop the person or the thing which is tampering them um, to preserve the books or something. I'm not entirely clear on why they have to do that. Probably got said and I just missed it. This is another show which seems to be just fine for me so far. It's two episodes in. Uh, it seems darker than I was initially expecting it to be, uh, but I like it so far for what it is. It could get better, it could not. <laughs> uh, but I'll watch the entirety of it because I like literature, so knowing more about books to read is a good thing, I guess. My next Life as a Villainous All Routes Lead to Doom is another Isekai show. Uh, we have a few of them this season, uh, as you've probably noticed. Um, and this is probably my favorite of the batch so far, to be honest, um, just because uh, the main character is basically put into an isekai fantasy world which is the same exact thing as a, um, uh, a a game that she used to play where there's this evil villainous character who once you uh, once your main character in that game obtains one of the male protagonists as a love interest she tries to uh, kill you for that and ends up getting killed herself so every scenario either leads to her being exiled from the kingdom or killed by love interest A, B, C, or D, or E. And so her knowing that, she is trying to remove all of those death flags as best as she can, um, while also being just a very likable person as well. You, you get to see her before she basically like reclaims her memories or whatever, um, and she's just the spoiled brat who nobody likes. She was on track to become that villainous, but once she remembers that she is a in an isekai situation, basically, um, she does everything in her power, like I said, to um, change relationships with people, um, just become more proactive, she is good at climbing trees, she becomes a great gardener, um, she just becomes uh, a very likable person. I, I enjoy this show for what it is, I don't know exactly where it's going to go, but it seems like it's going to be extremely fun, extremely cute, um, and uh, it just seems very, very fun to watch on screen as this girl who has this foresight about what's supposed to happen. She's just able to change these various situations um, and change the relationships that she would have had with these various people. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to be curious to see once it eventually does its time jump and puts her in uh, the school where all these uh, in-game events are supposed to happen, um, how she's going to interact with the main character, the main hero of that story, um, and how those various things end up taking place. Kaguya-sama Love is War was one of my favorite shows of last year um, and it's back with the season two. It's basically the same show as season one was uh, where you have these two people on a student council who are madly in love with each other but they're all they're both too stubborn and prideful to be the first one to admit it um, and so they end up trying to uh, devise these various situations where they try to con or make the other person con uh, confess their love for the other person. It's got a lot of comedy situations. The first episode is pretty good. Uh, I laughed a decent amount and yeah, like I said with a lot of these if you like the first season you're probably gonna watch the second season which is exclusively on Funimation for some reason. Uh, and so yeah, check it out. Ascendance of a Bookworm season two or part two, I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be designated as, uh, is the continuation of the winter tw uh, 2019 show, which I really, really enjoyed. Um, if you're not familiar, it focuses on a young girl um, who is uh, reincarnated into the body of a dying young child who is still very frail, but she has this latent magical ability which happens whenever she gets really, really pissed off. Um, and in this season, she is part of this uh, church 
uh, higher class or with the blue robe people and basically has to learn how to uh, take on those duties while maintaining her business uh, and um, uh, gaining the respect of her gray robed uh, followers essentially um, and so like I said, it's a show which I really enjoyed the first season of, and so I'm gonna probably enjoy the first or the second season of it as well. Digimon Adventure seems to be the most polarizing show of this season, just because it is a remake of the original show, um, which I watched as a young kid growing up. That said, it does take place in 2020, I think, um, or at least the near future, because it has like modern day technology and the the digital world instead of being this lush like forest world of sorts. Um, with uh, various environments and stuff, it takes. It seems to be more in the realm of um, the Cyber Sleuth games, which I played a little bit of, um, where it's just kind of this more bland atmosphere or this more bland digital world where you have um, various like virus Digimon um, having to or causing problems in the real world, like a train starting to just become unmanageable, or <laughs> a nuclear submarine losing all control and launching a nuke, because that's fun. Um, <laughs> so it has some very real dark scenarios in these first episodes, which I did not expect, but it also kind of escalated the evolutions. Like there's, uh, like, <laughs> from what I remember of the show, there's a like combined uh, evolution, which happens like very late into the show's like first season or whatever it was, um, which happens in the second episode. So uh, I'm not really sure what's gonna happen <laughs> at the end of this, uh, but I like it for what it is. Um, I it's it's one that I was kind of hesitant about watching initially, and then I watched the first episode. I'm like, yeah, I'm down for this. Um, and so uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I still think of them as their uh, English names. So. Ty and Matt are my guys, so I don't know. Um, I'm gonna keep watching it. I don't know where it's gonna end up going from here because it's kinda jumped the shark in the first episode, so who knows. Arte is another show which is in kind of a similar vein as Snow White with Red Hair, if you've seen that. It seems, it has a very similar feel where you have this young girl um, who in this case is part of a noble uh, family, um, but she has this immense passion for art and wants to be an artist desperately, so she ends up uh, going and trying to be recruited by a local artist and she gets turned down uh, mainly because she's a girl um, which it, it does kind of uh, <laughs> focus on that whole idea of her being a female in this um, time period where f women were kind of set into set roles and didn't really have a lot of options and weren't taken seriously as uh, artists or in professions designated or like mainly dealt with by men. Um, and so a lot of it thus far is her overcoming those obstacles and um, the sexist ideas of the time um, and proving herself as an artist and as someone uh, worth taking uh, notice of and being respectful to. Um, and so I like it so far. Um, like I said, it has a very similar feel to um, Snow White with the Red Hair. Um, and yeah, I enjoy seeing these types of stories. So I'm curious where it ends up going. I just hope it doesn't. Uh, continue to kind of lay on the whole like you're a woman get out of here you're not supposed to be an artist go in the home and make me a sandwich type of stuff uh, yeah I hope it doesn't dwell too much on that going forward uh, even though it is kind of like supposed to make us feel as annoyed with the whole idea of it as she currently is uh, but it's gonna get kind of old if it keeps on going over and over and over and over in every single episode. And the last show on this list of shows that I'm watching this season is Sing Yesterday to Me. Uh, this is, I believe, an anime adaptation of a manga or a story which is like 15 or 20 years old now. Um, I knew nothing about it, I know nothing about it aside from the first episodes that I've seen. Uh, it seems to be the drama of the season for sure. Um, and that kind of deals with a love triangle but also with focusing on a young man um, who doesn't really know what he wants to do now that he's been out of school for like a year or so. Um, and so I think that a lot of people can just relate to that character um, just in and of it that self, or just because you might go to school for something that you really want to do and then there's just nothing to really do with it. Um, this guy. But just the tone and essence of it that I've been getting so far just makes me really excited for it. Um, 
and just seeing the backstory and where the characters are going to end up being developed from here. It's one of my most anticipated shows of the season so far, just of the all the batch of them that I've seen. Um, and so I'm very curious to see where this ends up going from here. Another one that I just want to mention real quick because it dropped the whole 11 episode season for some reason right off the bat is uh, Dropkick on My Devil Dash, um, which is the second season of Dropkick on My Devil. Um, which is a show which I actually just finished the first season of, so I'm watching the second season right now. It's kind of got a similar feel as um, Umaro-chan, uh, so if you liked that show, you'll probably like this one. It's just kind of got like various parts to the episodes which focus on different uh, like short story scenarios um, which put our characters in comedic situations. And so, uh, if you watched the first season and enjoyed it, I probably like this one because so far I've watched one episode and I like it a lot more <laughs> than the first season so far. Uh, but I'm one episode in, so who knows where it goes from here. But uh, yeah, those are all the shows that I'm currently watching for the spring 2020 season. My favorite shows so far though are Princess Connect Redive, uh, Tower of God, uh, Sing Yesterday to Me, Arte, and um, My Next Life as a Villainous. And not in any particular order, but those are my five that are really the standouts for me so far this season. Um, but uh, yeah, let me know what you guys are watching in the comments down below. I'd be very curious to hear uh, what your favorite ones are so far, what you're not watching, what you want to see. There's been a lot of delays this season, obviously. SAO, Alicization, where Wonderworld Part 2 got delayed. Um, uh, Snafu, Season 3 got delayed. Um, uh, no Guns Life Season 2 got delayed, uh, some other stuff too that I'm not thinking of. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully all these shows are able to just run their full episodes and full seasons by uh, the end of June. Um, that would be lovely so we don't get a bunch of overlapping shows when uh, the summer shows uh, try to keep starting. Uh, but who knows with the state of the world. But uh, yeah. Those are my thoughts. Make sure to like, favorite, comment, and subscribe if you so choose. I appreciate it immensely. Follow me on Kitsu, which is a great anime app for following anime, keeping track of what you're watching, all the new shows, uh, what you want to watch, completed stuff, things like that. I use it all the time. Link is in the description for my page and how to sign up for it. But yeah, as always, once again, my good people, stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, my name is Nick Pell, and once again, keep on watching.